Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I am your host, Rex Bear. How the heck are you? What you are looking at is one of the oldest known maps in the public domain. Thousands of years old, could possibly predate just about any story in the Bible. And as you can see, there's definitely a circle there. What's interesting is you read some of these ancient texts, and some people will take them literal, some people metaphorically, some people both, some people neither. What I find interesting is some of the connection points outside of the ocean, which is possibly considered the firmament and the Great Barrier. There are seven islands shaped in triangle form, and it reminds me of the Freemason symbol you'll see at many of the lodges, not the compass symbol, but the upside-down pentagram with different colors. The difference is you'll see five points on the Freemason temples, and there's seven on this one. And once again, you have that magic number seven that I feel could link to either the Pleiades star system or the chakras or both. Sacred geometry is definitely linked there, but the number seven has a very powerful resonance. It's linked up big time. And what I find interesting is I've been reading through many of these passages that people who believe the earth is flat will use as reference points out of the Bible. And what they don't realize is a lot of these translations that are in the Holy Bible that most people have access to, whether it's, whether it was a passage from Greek or, or Hebrew or Sanskrit or Egyptian or Sumerian or from the Arata people, which predate the Sumerians by thousands of years, and the Sumerians talk about them, the master builders that built Gobekli Tepe. How literal do we need to take these quotes? And do we want to kind of look at all aspects of, of evidence, all the information, all the data? Do we want to look at the older texts? If people are going to think that something is a specific shape because of a particular text that they feel is one of the oldest texts in existence, would, would it change your mind if you found a text that was even older than that? Would it change your mind if you found out that many of the texts that you're reading in what you call the Holy Bible have been translated from other tongues? with different versions that has been watered down. How would you feel about that? And how do you feel now seeing that this is actual evidence of a map that the Sumerians put together thousands of years ago? Thousands of years ago, folks. And you can see Babylon is in the center. You've got the ocean surrounding it. And you've got the canal, different locations, the city, mountains, swamps, swamp gas from Uranus, etc. Yeah, like the seven churches and revelations. The seven is linked throughout scriptures and history, and it's even in architecture. It's all over. I mean, seven is a very powerful number. Is it the master number? Is it the God number? Well, let's take a look at another image here. This is even more broken down, and you can see the different regions, different areas in the city that are important, and then you'll see the seven islands that are launched out. And one thing that I find interesting as well is the space between these islands, according to these maps. It'll be six miles, six miles, nine miles. And I'll share that with you here in just a moment. But you'll see the Great Wall, the mountain, Assyria. And they can even take this map today and still reference Armenia. Here is another depiction of this map, and you'll see the seven stars, like the two horns, the two ears, the goatee. It's kind of what I think of when I see this, kind of like the, the, the Baphomet, Baphomet. Some people say Baphomet, some people say Baphomet. Potato, potato, okay? Relax. Don't get your in a bunch. But take a look at this. Here is the Freemason symbol that I was talking about. And you guys know, I don't think Freemasonry is evil. I think it's interesting. I think it's fascinating. I would never want to join an order like that just because I don't want to be bound to any secret rites or any, 
and he, you know, oh, okay, you have to be, you can't talk about this to the, to the little people because this is all secret in our initiation. Stuff like that, I'm, I'm not privy to. However, I do understand certain information, if it was available to everybody, would have maybe diminishing returns. Maybe there's certain information out there that people aren't ready for. And one thing that I heard is once you get to the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, one of, the, one of the secrets that they share with you, one of the keys that they give you, unlocks the origins of the Anunnaki and the ancient astronaut theory. Now, I can't validate that. I can validate, though, there are 33rd degree Freemasons. A, uh, a good friend of mine sent me a, um, it was like a typed up, initiation letter or something like a um you have been given the 33rd degree congratulations and i was like wow up well, there it is right there complete validation and and i have seen before that other pictures and stuff where people had the you know the 33rd degree medals on and you know um what, what would you call it insignias and stuff like that but just take a look at these right here so these so it's like they're hiding out on us. You know, until you get to that 33rd degree, you don't know about those two extra connection points. You only know about five of them. You know, I think that with, if you look at symbolism and you really take it deep metaphorically into the spiritual aspects, the subconscious, outside of the globe, outside of the firmament, you've got these seven points. And where do you link when you pass? When you pass through the abyss, where do you go? Do you connect to... Uh, part one, part two, part three, part seven. Where do you go? How, what level are you at once you leave this physical boot camp? Are you going to recycle and do it again? Are you going to go? Are you going to bounce off into another part of the cosmos, hang out there for a few eons, and then decide to come back and, and live through it again? What happens on the other side? One thing that I find fascinating about these ancient Sumerian texts, like the death of Gilgamesh. Oxford Sumerian uh, translations are incredible, and a lot of this stuff links very strongly with the Zachariah Sitchin translations as well, although I haven't been able to find anything on the planet Nibiru. I have found a ton of stuff on Nibiru, Nippur, the what could be base station of Nibiru or of their home planet, and I actually found another map that I'm going to share with you guys here that's thousands of years old of Nippur, of Nibru. And with all these stargates that we've been uncovering and these rites and rituals that have been left in these Egyptian pharaoh tombs, the TARDIS connection, Doctor Who connection, was Nippur, was Nibru, the base station and did they transfer, did they get here via portals instead of spaceships? I would say there's a much better chance of that than getting in a large spaceship and traveling for thousands of years to get here with fossil fuels or nuclear energy. That's just my opinion. Now, if they had machines that could run off of pure light, you know, absorbing the, the different stars' radiation— and using that as a fuel source, well, that's, that's a possibility. Yet, as I shared with you guys yesterday, I think that astral travel is a lot more effective. And what if you could take that to the next level and transfer your physical consciousness as well, like Star Trek style, without even having to get in a ship? Just... So I'm going to share with you guys also those maps of Nippur on these ancient stone tablets. But let's take a look again at the map and the breakdown. Babylon, the heart of the earth, surrounded by the oceans and the abyss. And then you've got the seven cardinal points, the seven connection points to the heavens. Where do you go after you leave? And reading about the, the death of Gil or the Gilgamesh going to the netherworld, Anana going to the netherworld, and Kidu going to the netherworld. Multiple deities have gone to the netherworld in the Sumerian tablets. For three days, three nights, just like Jesus in the New Testament. And as I shared with you already, I feel that Jesus in the New Testament is a compilation of 
stories that have been put together by Dumazid or Dumazi, the Sumerian king that ruled for 36,000 years, and then after the flood, and he was also a king carpenter, no, a king shepherd, and then after the flood, king's list, Dumazid, the king fisherman, king for 100 years, one uh, depiction was 110 years. I feel that they took those stories and transformed them into the version of Jesus that you have in the New Testament. And for those of you that say Freemasons are evil and you need to read the King James Bible, well, King James was a Freemason, and didn't he translate the Bible? Didn't he have a part of that? Some people say, no, he didn't have anything to do with that. Not at all. It was all, it was, it was John D or something like that, I think some people say. And maybe, maybe it was. I just find this fascinating. So you get through the firmament. You get outside of the, the ocean, the abyss. You go past that into the next level. Then I shared this with you, shared this with you. Take a look at this. I find this fascinating because this is another interesting map. And I'm going to leave the links for all of these websites in the video description box. Cartographic slash images dot net. You can see the map of uh, ancient Babylon. And it looks like a clock with seven compass points around it that are linked to the heavens. So once you travel outside of, you know, get, getting past that level, then you have an opportunity to like blast off into the cosmos. Whatever point you choose will take you to that connecting point in outer space. At least they thought it that way. And maybe astrally they could do that. Maybe the spirit world, when they left this physical body, they were in tune enough to be able to do that. And the Egyptian stuff, they just built upon these Sumerians and fine-tuned it and took it to the to maybe even to the next level. Now, I still feel that mummification of the body is a bad idea unless you want to be cloned later on in life or something like that in that exact archetype because I could see how they would take that DNA and reclone you to be that consciousness. However... Do you want to do it again, or do you want to go into the... I mean, what do you want to do? And especially reading that Sumeri, those Sumerian texts about the netherworld and how if people did certain things, they would go into this netherworld, but if they were burnt, if their bodies were burnt, then the smoke would go up into heavens and they wouldn't see them in the netherworld. That makes me think like Valhalla, the, the Vikings, how they would go on a boat. When, you know, when, they, were, when they would die, they would, they would be on a boat, and then they would light the boat on fire... And, you know, the bodies would be cremated on a boat. I think that's pretty awesome. And also, what if these pyramids and these different, uh, these different buildings, even the ones the Sumerians built, those incredible temples, linking up to certain parts of the stars, they could use those for these initiations. You could travel into different points astrally, obtain information, and bring it back. And that's why in the netherworld, in some of those stories where it talks about once you go to the netherworld, you can't come back because of the information you obtain. And Inanna came back anyway. And Kidu came back anyway. They made it back. Because fortunately, Enki had compassion on them and brought them back. Now, maybe it was a, you know, cloning technology. I don't know. But just because your physical body's dead, you die... Your spirit body on the other side, is it still connected at some level to your physical body at a vibrational level? So if your body is brought back in full form with cloning technologies and different biotech, maybe nanotech, is it a strong enough vessel to usurp up your spirit body again into that vessel back into this construct? You've heard about famous people, movie stars and entertainers that they don't want any of their DNA being captured by anybody or anything because that DNA has a connection point to their, to their body, to their soul. And that's why some people that are very powerful with mental abilities, they could take a book that's 300 years old or a, an, a relic that's 3,000 years old and be able to fill 
the energy of the person that had that relic or was reading that book before. Literally tap into the mind of the person that was reading that book before. If you are astute enough in the Akashic Records, in this galactic opportunity that we have every second of every day, always, tapping into these information sources and downloading this data, the only barrier to that is ourselves. Our own brain is a barrier to the higher levels of consciousness. And at the same time, it's key to the conscious level of reality as a tuning mechanism, as a physical receiver. So when these energies, these sources on the other side, let's talk about the netherworld for a minute, because what about... Dumazid, when he, ha he has to go to the netherworld for Inanna, his wife, so she can make it out of the netherworld. And I remember him talking about, or at least the, the scribe that wrote about it said, in these clay tablets, these ancient cuneiform Sumerian clay tablets from ancient Mesopotamia, saying, I have provided, you know, we have provided blood for the netherworld. We have provided things for this world, for the heavens. We've done everything that we need to do. So that confirmed to me that the netherworld, the other side, is every bit as real as this side. And there's rules and laws and regulations there too that are also connected at some point to this level, to the higher levels of consciousness, all intertwining and interweaving together. So with these maps, with these constructs, with these subliminal blueprints that we have access to, how do we take advantage of it for the betterment of, our, of everybody? For everybody. Now take a look at this. The seven wonders of the ancient world. This is the seven wonders of the ancient world and I find it interesting because, once again, you've got that number seven there. Pyramids of Giza, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Temple of Artemis, the Statue of Zeus, the Colossus, the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It's just incredible. Seven, 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 it's everywhere. And then here is another image. This is from AboveTopSecret.com. That's a great website sometimes. they got some really good stuff on there. But take a look at the different layers. You've got the mountain continents. You've got the upper earth. You've got the, the seawater, the abyss, the gates of heaven, the underworld. The heaven of Anu, that looks like a vagina, that symbol right there. If you look at underneath it, you've got the crescent moon. And then directly underneath that, you've got Inanna the gates of heaven, and a lot of this is correlating with much symbolism in the Freemasonry stuff that I've seen. So I think this is, this is pretty fascinating. Pretty, pretty fascinating, I should say. Nanu, nanu, nanu. And then take a look at this one. This is another map, you know, ancient Mesopotamia, of the way that they referenced the stars. So all interconnected here. As above, so below. Hermetics, quantum physics. One's just more artistic in its approach. And yet at the same time, it's not, if that makes sense. You have more of an open canvas with the hermetics philosophy than you would if you were a scientist at a laboratory studying quantum physics underneath multiple bosses that were getting paid by multiple investors that they had to meet certain requirements and fit certain criteria to meet the agenda of the financiers. If you're a hermeticist and you can study quantum physics, you can study um, telepathy, you can study mind over matter, you can study how to change your metabolism and make it warm in cold rooms like these Buddhist monks, you can learn how to walk on needles, you can learn how to astral project, and you're outside of that block. You're outside of that Borg cube that loves to assimilate the consciousness. 
And the more I think about it, the more I think about these ancient relics that show snakes wrapping around people, that show cubes as a form of worship, those are harvest points. Those are key points, sidzils, symbols of power. Cardinal points, bridges that allow certain entities to feed off of the energy. It would be like, it's like going deep sea fishing. Except for when you, instead of just using a pole to capture a fish, you're going you're gonna to drop a couple pieces of dynamite. Boom! Boom! And then you have all these fish coming up. I, I feel that's kind of the same thing when you have... Thousands of people gather around these cubes and start worshiping it. Or when you have these mass rituals that are linked to certain points of energy. They're soul suckers, you guys. You will not assimilate me! <laughs> it's, it's quite incredible, if you ask me. Absolutely quite incredible. So... I think that I'm going to leave it at that. I will be doing another podcast here shortly where I'm going to share with you. I'll give you a little tip here. Nippur, the sacred city of Enlil. Well, Enlil is most likely Yahweh. Enlil is the God in the Bible that caused the flood because people were getting too horny according to these scriptures. So, and yes, I'm being a little bit sarcastic there, but that's that's one of the reasons. Supposedly, people were having sex with goats, so, you know, Enlil said, we gotta, we gotta just cause a big flood here. <laughs> those, those goat screwers, man! Wipe them out! Take them out, man! I think there's a lot more to the story there, especially when you read these ancient Sumerian tablets that talk about how Enlil got upset because the humans that they gave certain technologies to you, got too smart for what they considered the Anunnaki's good. You know, they're like, uh-oh, man, these guys are way too smart now. They know way too much. And we can't let them mess with our hegemony. Ah, so what do we do? Let's just wipe them out with a big flood. Now, was there some sick shit going on back then? Absolutely, I'm sure there was. Does that mean you need to wipe out the whole world with a flood? Hmm, I don't think so. But hey, I'm not God. I'm not Enlil. I'm just a measly human being. So what do I know? It's definitely fascinating, though. I'm going to share this with you guys, this map here in a little bit that shows the blueprints of Nippur, which could be, which could be the base station for the planet Nibiru, Stargates, etc. What do you think about all this? Does it resonate with you? Let me know, leakproject.com, question everything, be the change you want to see, make sure to support our sponsors. Now, Tiger Stream is doing a promotion right now, or if you want the king of media streaming boxes, there's $100 off right now. Click the link in the video description box, Tiger Stream, 100 bucks off, the king of streaming media. These things are awesome. It's like having a computer, but it's the size, of, It's you know, it's... It's a lot smaller than a computer, but it's like having a, a fully integrated computer hooked up to your big screen TV, your surround system, and you can even play Android games on it. So how cool is that? Check it out. Tiger Stream. Click the link. Save 100 bucks. That's my shameless plug. You'll be glad you did. Also, check us out at leakproject.com. There has been multiple podcasts that I have made exclusive for premium members at leakproject.com. 10 bucks a month or 50 bucks for the whole year. And guess what? I just did my thousandth podcast yesterday. So there's a lot more coming, folks. The show that never ends. Welcome to the Leak Project Order. <laughs> Be the change you want to see, folks. And thanks, Mods, for keeping an eye on the chat room for me. Thanks, everybody, that joined me live for this edition of Leak Project. Be the change you want to see.